Yo, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Charlemagne the God over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, maybe. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome to the Straight Spinners Podcast. You got your host, David Reckless. Fwit, 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 fwit. Marty Locks at your service right here. And yes, we got sir. today, we got an incredible, incredible, incredibly special guest, okay? This guy is incredibly special. Yo, this guy is my mentor. He been with, like, he's my big dog. You feel me? I had to observe. He said, hey, you stay on the porch. You ain't coming off the stoop yet. Oh, I, I got my boy, my mentor, my brother, who been teaching me the game, Flippin' Murph. Flippin' Man. Murph. You got a lot of sauce on that, but I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to get you your flowers, big bro. Yeah, for sure, man. You got to give them when they're deserved. And, like, dude, you feel me? So my guy, flipping Murph, we actually go back, man. We oh go yeah, back, like, oh yeah, from the beginning, man. Back when I was a little pup, pup, you know. Yeah, I'll saying? tell you, he everybody yeah. big, bro. Hey, man, I'd have been know, around man. the world a long time. But this is a really like special, like this is an honor for me to even have you on the show for real. All right, so why don't you go ahead and like break it down? What you, what do you do? What's your thing? You know what I mean? Uh, I yeah, mean, give us intro, man. I do a little bit of everything, man. Like my Instagram, flipping dot Murph. You know okay. what I mean? And essentially, that's just who I am. Like, I've been flipping everything since I was a kid. When I was six, seven years old, I was flipping goldfish to the neighborhood. Oh, you many Warren Buffett out here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my sister, she had a, a, a fish tank full of fish. And she didn't know what to do with them, so I bagged them up and sold them to the kids. Oh. And so I've been doing that since I was like six, seven. All right, and man. And he stopped. Oh, hustle's <laughs> ambition, huh? Natural yeah. born hustler. Yeah. Man, that's where we got that similarity right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to say what I started flipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm right there with you. You know what I mean? Like, so you say you, you do a little bit of everything, but what's your, like, favorite? How about that? What's your huh. favorite way to make money beyond flipping? Really, man? I, I can't say that I got a favorite. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, really, for me, as long as I can do something to have time on my hands, I'm going to do it. Mm. And yeah. so... Most precious commodity right there is time. Yeah, like, the money, I ain't got a lot of it, but the money really don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's a means to an end to have time on your hands, especially with a six-year-old boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, that's all I care about, as Ooh. long as I can... You know, if I got to, if I got to, I deliver groceries on the side too. Okay. I don't care what it is. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if, if I could go deliver some groceries to make a couple of dollars to free up some time, then that's what then I'm going to do. That's what it is. Yeah. So I ain't, I ain't oh really God. got a favorite way to make money. I just, it's a means to an end, man. I heard that. I, I definitely understand that, man. Especially having my son. So like, it gives you perspective. It's like, yo, I got to get, I, I got something to live for. I got something to protect. I got something to work for. You All know right. Me? Yeah, for so, sure, man. And it's yeah, real man. easy to uh, lose sight of, uh, you know, what's more important between time and money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That one of, like, the biggest myths I heard growing up is time is money. Y'all remember hearing that? Uh, yeah, yeah man. Come on, time yeah. is money. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Actually, nah, man. Time is definitely worth more than yeah. money as a, yeah. I got to grow and mature. Yeah. I see that now, Perspective, man. man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I finally learned to zoom out. You know yeah, what I mean? For sure. Yeah, definitely, bro. Like, especially like that's actually a good segue from my one of our first questions for you, uh, uh, Flippin' Murph. Uh, you recently talked about like ninety days to live, mm. and I also watched the video too. So, can you break that down for the people? Like, break down like what brought you to this ninety days to live, or can you go ahead and? You know, explain that for us. So essentially, it's really six months to live, six which months. is which is like cliche. A lot of people say, you know, live like you got six months to live. Um, but it's hard to really put that into perspective mm -hmm. a lot of times, because if nobody really told you you got six months to live, it's hard to act like you got six months to live. So really what I had to do is figure out who I really am and it comes to a point to where you're sick and tired of not achieving what you know you can achieve. Mm. And so the mentality came about because- That's Jules right there. It, it's, it's real though. Like mm. you're not really going to reach what you can reach until you're sick and tired of yourself. Mm. You're Ooh. sick and tired of being lazy. Uh, you're sick and tired of, you know, 
doing the things that don't matter. Like I, I still like PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? So I, I still play the games with the boys and everything. But it comes a point in time when you're sick of daydreaming about what you want to be. And that's what pushes Priorities. you to believe. Yeah, it pushes you to think like, okay, let me really get this stuff done. And so that's really what, what it came down to is like, yo, like I know what I am. Mm. Um, certain people know what I am. But it's just time to put your, your reality into the world. And so – six months to live and like to this day six months for me was this past sunday that's why i had to reschedule like i had to pitch i pitched uh my nonprofit foundation that i'm starting to like almost 300 people whoa came in first place and won a grant six months whoa. to the day whoa you know what i'm saying <laughs> okay. whoa. Oh, so, big uh, thing <laughs> big moves <laughs> i'm just saying so i, I, I got, got my whoa. first whip, grant. Whip, whip, whip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, 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 Don wait, DeMarco. Wait. I hate to interrupt, yo, because you was on a roll right <laughs> now. You know, know what I'm like, saying? I, I ain't even trying to get a word in, but yo, so <laughs> could you break down this uh, this nonprofit you said? Okay, God. so so the nonprofit is called Dad's Tripping, and essentially what that is is about fostering relationships between dads and their kids. Mm. If we really think about it, dads don't have help beyond the fact of. If you don't have means and you don't have money, you about to go to jail for child support. Literally. You right. know what I'm saying? Or you doing well enough to where you don't need no resources. Mm -hmm. But for the people like myself, the middle class, mm -hmm. you don't get nothing. Yeah. yeah. And so that's really true. I'm putting together a foundation that's gonna help out the middle class dad. You know, the the lower income, the high income is for everybody, but specifically it's for the cats that is doing what they can do living check to check trying to get by we're gonna give them some real resources and we're gonna provide a space for them to go if locally we're gonna get together as dads and their kids have fun uh oh wow you know what i mean because people the the reaction that i get from when me and my son are on instagram after a haircut they like yeah. oh y'all need a, a youtube and all of this and i'm like yo i, said, I know a lot changes. of good dads but you know we don't get seen and so yeah. that just led me to be like, you know what, let me create something so so dads can really be seen out here. And that's essentially what it is. So dads tripping, we're going to take trips locally. And if it's something longer than an hour away, we're going to get on a charter bus and we're going to go. Man, like that's the epitome of beautiful. Hey, bro. man, I like, appreciate that, man. Yo, like that is beautiful. Wow. It, it's going to change the scope for a lot of, a lot of men. Wow, like, bro, like, that's <laughs> dynamic, bro, on so many different levels, bro. And, yeah, like, man. man, like, I'm, I'm I'm lost for words. Like, hey. bro, that, kudos to my God. Don DeMarco, Don DeMarco. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to change the scope, man. And, and essentially, uh, being an entrepreneur, like, I'm creating a job for myself right now. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, You found doing, a void and you're filling it. Yeah, pretty much. But it's I'm creating a job yeah. for me. Okay. I want the money, too, at the end of the day. And so why not create this to where I could really be doing something and making an impact? I really like that, man. Because uh, it ain't nothing wrong with that, man. No, nah, like, it you ain't. Know, you might, yeah, bro. You get to help people and, yeah. you know, like, you know, live abundantly. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Dads get disrespected on the, on the level that's unheard of, man. <laughs> and so, like, my goal is really yeah. going to be to put us out there in the forefront to show like we love our kids just like anybody else you know moms Absolutely. get all the resources shout out to moms <laughs> y'all need the resources <laughs> yeah. but we need some resources too <laughs> right <so>. right <laughs> real come on yeah, no, I, I definitely respect that. i definitely like when i be out with my son when it's just not me like as a family but just me and my son mm -hmm. and people really do be like you know, oh that's your son and i was like yeah that's my son like yeah. and they're just like surprised to see like a black man yeah. with his son walking around you know what yeah. i mean yeah and it's just like and i live in Grove city so i'd be walking around you know Grove oh, city oh, yeah, and then yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like them little old ladies they, they legit be slowing down like he's like he's so precious i'm like thank you <laughs> you're right you're right yeah, but you know it's, it's funny because about a, a year ago one of my friends i went to high school with he had a diaper party and like men don't what? really do diaper right men don't do diaper parties but I so we got together it was probably almost 20 men we was at Penn's mechanical at easton and so when it was time to leave you and these is like ex-football players and stuff too so Ooh, they whoa. they big guys okay. and so we everybody had like three or four bags and boxes of diapers and we walking through pins and everybody's like 
Wow. <laughs> like, they can't believe, like, that black men are carrying diapers through this joint. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, we do this, too. Wow. And so that type of stuff needs to be seen, man. I, I ain't even never heard of diaper party, man. Me either, man. Hey. I, I, I be changing diapers, but I ain't never heard of no diaper hey. party. So it's, that's a, a thing that's really reserved for women. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we need those same things. Like, because economically, diapers are expensive. Yeah. So why yes. why wouldn't we throw a diaper party for a man? Because it is what it is. Wow. Man, man, oh, man listen, Bro, I went to get some wipes the other day. <laughs> John, man, I spent $25, $30 on some wipes, man. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. and them suckers only got me like, well, how much was it? Like, maybe like $160. Oh, yeah. But, like, you feel me? And oh, to get a box, you got to, you gotta, like, drop like $50, $60 for yeah, a box, bro. for a full you box. You should have had a diaper party, man. You'd have still had that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. That part, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, hey, the more man, you know. Tight. Yeah, man. man. That's freaking great, yo. So, like, I feel like that's, like, also another awesome segue to another question we got for you. All right, so what are some goals that you have for 2022 that you wish to, wait, that you'd like to accomplish going into 2023? Um, You're like, you're, you're big, like, Two or one big goal that, or small goal, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's it's you a know, very yeah. big question, yeah. You know, it's hard to really pinpoint any particular goal, um, and really because for me, it comes at a like a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just trying to make it through the day, essentially. You know what I mean? And I I got things that I I see in my brain, but I can't even really focus on those until I, I do what I got to do today. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so it's really, it's, it, I break it down like this. We know eventually what we want to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got an idea of who we are five years from now. Mm -hmm. We don't exactly know what it looks like. Right. But all we really know is that if we don't execute today, we not going to get there. And so for me, I got a commercial cleaning company, right? I've been doing that for like six, seven years. But that really I came about business. because of a guy gave me an opportunity. He seen, I, I went up to him like, yo, if you, if you know anybody that's looking for this type of service, let me know. He called me the same night like, I got something for you. Ooh. Shout out to him. I'd be forever grateful. But the reason why I got that opportunity is because this particular man handled his business years ago. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so I look at it like that. If I'm not doing what I need to be doing right now, I'm not going to be able to help somebody that's four or five years old right now, mm. 10, 15 years down the road. And so I just try to do what I can every day, man. Like, <laughs> so you're able to pass it along. Yeah, man. Because because wow. imagine for this, like this example that I'm giving, imagine if this particular man didn't start his business 40 years ago. He would have never been able to help me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and so yeah. I got to do what I'm doing today so you can help someone so I can help. It, it might be forward. your son. You know what I'm saying? Like it might it might be a person that's not even born yet. You wow. know what I'm saying? But you right. Oh. Right. Right. Show so right. so you got to playing Doctor Strange and <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like we don't we don't we don't see the, re the importance of like really executing every day like so if you execute every day you your your, your goals are going to materialize. You know what I'm saying? So I I want to have the nonprofit, you know what I mean? And I know it's the bigger goal, but I don't have a detailed situation for it yet. I just know what I need to do today and tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And so, and that goes into that six months to live. Like, I'm going to go ahead and do this piece today because I got time to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, if we really did what we needed to do every day and not wait until tomorrow, like, imagine how much stuff we can get done. I still procrastinate, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, for instance, like, so we all have things that we can do today. Mm -hmm. And those same things, we'd be like, you know what, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Gotcha, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? And in, in most, in most cases, the things that we push off until tomorrow are really going to take 10 minutes to do right now. If we think about it, it's only going to take me 10 minutes to send this email. Why not do it right now? 
Yo, you know the reason why <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I was like I was like, yo, uh, he he talking about me right now. <laughs> hey bro, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about everybody. Yeah, yeah for real. Like, <laughs> no, but the reason why I Ain't actually the, the reason why I felt that so much is because I told PZ, like honestly, me and PZ's been trying to get this podcast like get it started for a long time. We we actually had a number of people lined up, mm-hmm. but every, how many people said every time it was time <clears> something <throat> happened or they canceled on us? Uh, bro, all the time. I mean, so, but, but that comes with the territory. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, Marty. Marty. Yeah. <laughs> Marty Locks. Yeah. Uh, so, me and Marty, we just uh, like, we just decided to like we're just gonna do it, mm-hmm. and now we're doing it. People are actually seeing like the results. Now we're seeing that, and also reason I said I'm gonna I I told uh, Billy and Josh that I'm gonna spend the next six months trying to really lock in. Mm-hmm. And he says, bro, if you're really gonna do this, I'm gonna be on you every single day. I'm gonna really annoy you. <laughs> every- yeah. Yeah. This dude has called me every, he's like, did you go to the gym today? I'm like, bro, I just got up. He's like, bro, you gotta go to work in two hours, right? I was like, so yeah, how you gonna get your workout in? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, 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 but, but. Don't, don't ask billionaire Josh. Remember that, bro? He's <laughs> gonna, he gonna stand by it, bro. He, he, he has been stand- but he, but because, and actually, committed to it and like this last week and a half I actually been working out and actually been mm-hmm. feeling great and also you know I said I'm gonna spend six months uh tr- saving money not eating out uh working on my finances working on the podcast music mm-hmm. um creating content and I've been locked in and so I still procrastinate but um you're right because there's yeah. like I had to I had to make another video I still didn't make it <laughs> <laughs> it'll take me. It'll take oh, me. Man. It'll still take. It takes me twenty minutes to make it, huh? I'm gonna do that yeah. after this. But I, I tell you what, though, like you got to be intentional about the stuff you want to do. Yeah. yeah. Like so, you got to put things into your life that's going to remind you. Y'all ain't looking. You know my license plate say, don't you? Yeah. It's, yeah. You, what's that? A four a.m. Four a.m. Oh. Wow. <laughs> So whether or not I wake up at 4 a.m., I see the reminder every day when I walk to my car. All right, so what time do you go to sleep? It depends on what I got going mm. on. My goal is to be asleep by 10 o'clock. Okay. I never really make that, though. I see. If I'm really on top of my game, I'm asleep by 10. Ah, okay. Most times it's like 12, sometimes 1 o'clock. I've been up to 3, 4 o'clock before. Like, you're supposed to be up at four. I'm supposed to be up at four. <laughs> you know, but that's just sometimes my brain just don't allow me to, you know, get that rest where I'm I can, you know, right shut down. You. Right there with you. You know, and so it takes things like working out. You know, so you gotta tire yourself out sometime. But, you know, like I said, like you gotta put things into your life that's gonna remind you of what you wanna do and what you wanna be. That's why my my people all the time, uh, What's 4 a.m. stand for? I'm like, that's when the early bird catch the worm. Mm-hmm. You know, my goal is to be out, up and out by 4, 4.30 every day. So that means you up at 3. Hey, bro. Hey, you out at 4. <laughs> Ooh, man, I got some serious. You know, the last time I was changes. up at that, like, no. <laughs> I was, but, when I was in the military. It, it, it was like, <laughs> look, it depends on how much you want it, man. Yeah. Like when you when you can appreciate what it feels like to get some work done at at five o'clock in the morning, like before I, the sun is up. Yo, yeah. when I'm driving down 161, shout out Northside, grew up, born and raised all day every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I'm driving down the street and ain't nobody else out there. Like I feel like I'm getting over on everybody. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Yo, Yo you I'm, know, I'm getting over on everybody when I'm out there. Right? You know what? You, you know what that reminds me of? What's that? Mamba mentality. Yeah. Like I was watching this uh, interview with Kobe. He said he's like, all right, cool. Like I, he's like, I wake. He's like, if I wake, he's like, there's 24 hours in the day, mm-hmm. and if I start working out from four to six, he's like, I just worked out four to six. Then I take an hour and a half break, eat, rest. Then I go back and work from work out eight to ten. Mm-hmm. Then I take another break. Then I work out um, from twelve to two or twelve to one, and I take another break. He's like, versus now the person who gets up, the athlete who gets back six, works out, and then goes yeah. the rest of the day. Yeah. Right. And he's like, do you see? He's like, I just completely, I just did more workouts than you, and I'm going to outperform you. I yeah. was like. Yeah. Wow. That's what that that's it's, what that reminds me of. It's true, and, and like so. That makes me think about another thing that, you know, people don't understand about me. So even when I win at something, like you say, mama mentality, job's not done. Like, I know what it feels like to get a victory and celebrate the victory. Yeah. Like, I've learned to just appreciate the victories. I don't celebrate victories no more. 
Like they yeah. come and they go. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you only as hot as your last song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, you can true. you you celebrate and, like you appreciate the wins, but at the end of the day, like when I won this grant last week, people they like, like oh like what you about to do? I'm about to go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, I'm about to cook. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, I'm, yeah, I'm about to go friends. home. Like, and they, what? Yeah, people. So people are expecting me to just be like doing backflips and stuff. Like I appreciate winning. But, but at the end of the day, but you, you kind of like knew what was gonna happen, right? You? Like, so you already celebrated in your mind, right? Type. I'm, man, you happy? I'm right there with you. The next guy. morning, I was up cleaning the toilets again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, back to the grind. <laughs> like, yo, this ain't over. Right. I still gotta get this. Right. Dang up and move. That's just a piece of the puzzle. You put yeah. it in a bag, and you are gonna put the puzzle together later. You know what I mean? Or actually, you got to put it together today. All right, yeah. so it's only gonna take you ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Exactly. exactly. Uh, have you thought about um, um, have you thought about uh, like using a whiteboard? Man, there's a lot of things like that that I need to do that I just can't translate it from my brain down to any kind of other surface. Like people, they say write it down all the time. I'm bad at that kind of stuff. I, I, writing it down I have my whiteboard With my months Like Like one thing that Josh showed me Like uh, Billionaire Josh Showed me that He said Like He plans his whole week out oh, I remember he was telling me that Like too. so I started doing that And that does help me out I'm sure I'm sure it will help me too <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just asking So I mean <laughs> Yeah I, I just don't bro Like I I feel like there's a part of me that thinks I can remember everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, we're in the same boat, bro. Man. But it's not. It's not true. <laughs> it's not, you, it's know not. It. you know it's it. It's not. It's <laughs> not. And and like I'm bad with even putting stuff in my calendar on my phone. All right, so I got better with that. One. Yeah, it's it's hard, man. Yeah, it is. And that and I feel like that's why I I work extra hard at getting it done today while I'm thinking about it. Oh, I you see. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so oh. if I get it done today, I don't have to worry about what's oh, coming up. It. It's already done. <laughs> right. Hey, that's just logic. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I don't need to write it down because I'm going to just, you know, do it now. Don't and this. It yeah. That's tight, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to do it. it. Obviously, I'm sure it will help. You know what I mean? But it's just one of them points that I ain't really made it to yet. I heard that. Yeah, I feel you. So you talk. Uh, you mentioned that you're staying active, right? And mm-hmm. you're more active now. How was it? How was that during the pandemic? How did the pandemic affect you? Um, or did it not slow you down at all? Pandemic really didn't stop like the cleaning company, because in a lot of these office businesses, the buildings, yeah. it was like home health care. People still coming through, so I still had to go through every day and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything, the pandemic showed me um what it looks like to have like the urgency that i got now Mm -hmm. like a lot of times when it was on lockdown i would just go out and drive um Mm -hmm. obviously because i still had a reason if i was if i got in trouble i'm like yo i'm just leaving work you know what i mean but i would man i made it from cleveland and moore's road all the way to downtown and probably seen four cars that's a long distance to not see nobody during yeah. the pandemic during the pandemic during the lockdown when we weren't really supposed to be outside yeah oh man we're still right outside <laughs> at the very beginning but, yeah bro but you know, so imagine driving down starting around moore's road on cleveland avenue going all, all the way, way downtown down. yeah, that's a long stretch and cars. seeing like four cars man what like you talking wow. about you felt like the end of the world like, was here yeah you know what i mean and, and, and so for me the pandemic what it did was it made me think because during that time we didn't have a reason to dream about anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We didn't have a reason to want to achieve any goals because the world stopped. Mm-hmm. And honestly, there was a moment to where it's like, yo, if this is it for the end of the world, I didn't get to do half the stuff I planned on doing. Okay. And so you let that sink in. Like I'm never going to leave my mark on this world because we about to die from COVID. <laughs> wow. I'm never going to like be who I know that I am. And that's really what the what, what the pandemic did for me, man. Wow. It made me. It, it terrified me that I was never going to achieve and be who I know that I am. So that's 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 wild. So that's, that's one thing where we actually are on tough. opposite 
sides of the spectrum because uh-huh. they literally did the opposite for me. Really? I thought the entire thing was a joke. Okay. And the simple fact that I didn't even have to leave the house and I was yeah. making a retarded <laughs> bank. A lot of <laughs> a lot of people was. <laughs> like, yo, and I was like, bro, like this is goofy, bro. Yeah. Like, bro, a lot laughable. of people came up. <laughs> yeah, bro. Bro, bro was eating, bro. I'm I don't sure. need you. Bro. Yeah. Like, but dang, that's crazy. I wish I I wish that I don't want to say the roles were reversed, but mm-hmm. I do wish that I could have seen your perspective. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I feel like that would that would definitely help me right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when everything's like back active. I mean, granted, yeah, we all get money, but yeah, there's always more to be had. You feel oh, me? For sure, man. But yeah, absolutely, man. Like, yeah. So that that was my perspective, though, man. It's like, yo, I ain't gonna never be able to do half the stuff. Wow. So I felt like them dreams was about to die with everybody else. So. Wow. <laughs> but for real though, people was dropping like flies. They were, man. man. It was kind of scary, but yeah. like, and I, I'm not trying to like say that, that was a joke at all. Yeah, no, I, I mean you. like the actual. Yeah, yeah, the, the situation that yeah. we're in. I mean, because like, the reality is, we don't really know what's going on. Yeah. Whether whether you were scared in that moment or not scared at that moment, nobody had the answers. Exactly. And they still don't. And nah, they <laughs> like they still don't. People still get it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> we ain't got, we ain't got, we don't know nothing, nothing yeah, exactly. about anything. <laughs> it, literally, like, man, but I ain't gonna get into it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we all got our own theories and stuff man. like that. So let's get back to the business. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, David. <laughs> All right. Uh, now that after the grant, <clears throat> I know you say you don't plan anything, but what are some strategies have you laid out if you if you have that help that will help you get to the next stage of where you're trying to go or help your business grow and expand? So rapidly. yeah, there's this uh, this graph I just put together recently. Mm-hmm. So essentially, it's it's a three circle graph, right? And so. The first and smallest circle is circle number one. And that circle represents like your inner circle, the people that's closest to you. Okay. And then the second circle, which is just bigger than the first circle, that's actually circle number three. I'll tell you why in a minute. Even okay. though that represents like a lot of your associate circle, that's that second yeah, circle. Associates, right. And so the third circle, which is the biggest circle, is actually circle number two. And so really what the, what this symbolizes is circle number one, the smallest circle, right? Those are the people, directly, yeah, the, the people that's closest to you that you know is going to support whatever you got going on, okay? And cir- the second largest circle, the one that's actually number three, are the people like we was talking about before we started, the people that don't show love mm. even though you show love, right? Mm-hmm. They don't really support the way that they should support, gotcha. you know what I mean? And so circle number th- the number two, which is actually the biggest, are the people who don't know you, mm-hmm. but it, show, you it, love. show you love, bro. That's, it's, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I was literally just talking about this with yeah. somebody like earlier this week. Like, what? Oh, my God. I, I, I had to show you all the graph that I actually made a graph of it because... And the reason I say this is that's my business model right now for everything, no matter whether it be the nonprofit, whether it be the T-shirts, whether it be anything that I'm doing, right? So, okay, I put something out. The people that's closest to me, they're going to support it, right? Mm -hmm. And then from the people that's closest to you, your focus should immediately go towards the people that don't know you because they're going to give you more love than your associates. And what happens is you go from the smallest circle to the biggest circle immediately, and once that bigger circle show you the love, they force the people who should have loved you to show the respect finally. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and so well, why you, does, you gotta skip the second circle, man. But why is it why what? is it like that though? Why why does it have to be like that? Why can't we just I mean it, we, we we're we're the same way. Yeah. Everybody's kinda yeah. the same way. Bro. When you think about it. You got you you got your immediate people that's gonna show you love. You skip all your associates. You don't worry about marketing to your associates. You go straight to the people that don't know you. And they force the your immediate your your your, your people that kind of know of you the your so they force your associates. They all the time, bro, like it's your birthday. How many people really give you that birthday shout out that everybody be looking for? Hey, this year you know I ain't gonna saying? lie. But it's gonna be a lot of people like when you Squad pop and blow for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Everybody that sh- that got the opportunity right now to give you that happy birthday post, they because they get clout for knowing you. Your associates is gonna get clout for knowing you when you pop, mm-hmm. and at that point you don't care no more because you live through 
y'all cats wasn't giving me no love. Yeah. But when the people that don't know you show the love, they force the, your associates to fall in line. Wow. So what is wow. this graph called? <laughs> It's called what is it? I think it's called Hustle Nomics One on One. I think that's what I call that's it. That's <laughs> wow. So how do you how do you like directly promote to those people who don't know you? Like what is your do you have a method? Yeah, to, actually that's actually a great question. Uh, for yeah. that's our next question. Like how do you? We know how to reach those those who are tangible, but like closest to us. But those who are not, but like, I'll show you love. Like how do you find that core? Like, it's do you really it's in? really about. It's really about like your marketing at that point, you know what I mean? And so, it, it comes down to like your paid ads and Facebook, your paid ads and um, SEO. Instagram, yeah, SEO. It's just really like because obviously, like you're marketing to your associates at the same time, right? Yeah. But you're not you're not focusing on them oh. to the point to where you're expecting them to do anything because you can't not market to everybody, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. You just do things with the mindset of I'm not thinking about these associates doing what I what I hope they do, and so you know, in a sense, really that graph is just really telling you to not think about the people that ain't showing you love like you like like how they should be. Right, woman. And so really, it's just your marketing, man, and it's just ignoring them for now until you know they show up later. They get the popping for real. Yeah, like, it, it wow. makes you grind. It makes you grind. Wow, man. Like, bro, I, man, I, I need to, man. I, Do you think we did that? Man, listen, bro. Like, I, I literally just uninstalled Instagram because I'm trying to do, <laughs> I'm trying to do a cleanse, man. Yeah, like, well, just, I'm going to reinstall so, this app so I can follow you. Bro, All right. I'm like, I you, need to follow you, man. Like, you, you, I'm telling you, you got to. You got to focus on the people that don't know you, man, because they going to show up before the people that do. Bro, that well, and that's that. That's the sad truth, yeah. man. Bro, why do you think that is? That's what I'm. Tr uh, hello, I'm sitting here stuck. <laughs> well, I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. Don't worry about it. It's I think about it too. Like I got a mental note of everybody that don't support me. Mm. I do. I I don't focus on it, but I know who don't support oh, yeah. me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I know who do. I know who support me heavy. But like. That's why I said, like, Wale, Wale, he he be going off when people do interviews on him. But it's like, I feel the same. I'm like the Wale of Columbus. Like, I've been in these streets for a long time. I got a t-shirt company. My t-shirt is hotter than a whole lot of people. I done <laughs> seen people come. I done seen people go. Okay. But, like. You do like prints and stuff like that. Oh man, I, I do it listen, all. Listen, man, he oh, got we're screen. Have a conversation, <laughs> listen, <laughs> he's the one who. I'm listen, not even playing. When it comes to my brand and my shirts, you see up there. Yeah. Guess who taught me how to? Guess who taught me where I got my game from? Uh, flipping Murph. <laughs> flipping Murph. Oh man, hey, look, man, that was a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> not, but it, it, you got it. I don't know, man. Like, like I said, I, I know the people that don't support me. You see them supporting everybody else, you mm. know what I'm saying? But you just got to kind of just ignore it and just keep going, man. It's hard to do. I'll be mad. Mm. I'll be lying if I didn't say I don't be in my feelings about it. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, just it is what it is. And I'm, I'm going to keep it. If, you, if can't nobody stop you, they're not going to stop you either. It's just we ain't what I thought we was, and that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never was either. <laughs> Sucks, yeah. Bro. Like, yeah. yeah, man, I'm right there with you, bro. Yeah. I am. You know what? You, you know what? You just remind, another thing you remind me of. I remember we were talking one day, and when I first started, he was like, "I'm gonna show you." He said, "I'm gonna show you everything I can," but you eventually got to stand on your own. And he's a. And the last thing he told me, right? He was like, "You're not gonna make sales, but if you get one person to buy your shirt, you won." I was like, "What? Just one shirt?" Because one, I, I didn't un, at the time. Mm -hmm. He he was already there at the time. I was trying. I was trying to see it, but mm -hmm. I couldn't until when I actually got the product, got the everything, everything finished. I'm like, yo, why am I not? He's like, and then I, I was like, yo, these, it's not, this is not it. Da, da, da. He's like, remember when I told you? If you did, you he's like, we're focused on your first sell. And I was like, all right, cool. I focused on getting my first sell. Got that first sell, yo. I was like, yo. Then I went, and then after I got that first sell, I went and got another one, <laughs> and got another one. And then I was trying to get. I was like, I didn't get as as much as I uh, bought, mm -hmm. I, I man made. I didn't sell as much, but he, then he, I came back to him. He's like, "Did you get?" He's like, "You got." I was like, "How many shirts?" He said, "I was like, oh, like no cap. I sold ten shirts, wow. and I had th like I bought them in bulk, so I had like thirty five shirts. 
Mm. But I flipped him. Was able, and he's like, he's like, out of those ten, what did you? Um, he's like, what did you do to those ten to get? The, I was like, oh. And I was like, yeah. and like his whole time, he's, he's like, he's like, and then he said, the, when you first started, he's like, I was, I was trying to teach you something, but you weren't ready because you had to go through it. Now I can teach you the next lesson. Yeah, I mean, because wow. one of my favorite things, if I see something in my mind, like, and I create that, you win. So the whole purpose behind you, if you create something that you see in your mind and you sell one of those things, you won. How many people ain't did that? Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you win. Whether, you know, you sell a thousand of them or not, you sell one. There's somebody walking around, or this, your homeboy or not. It's somebody walking around with something you seen in your head. And, like, that, that's that's huge. We don't get that wow. enough credit. You know what I mean? Man, like, wow. I see people all the time, like, wearing some of my shirts, people I don't know. And then I walk up on them, like, that's a sweet shirt. <laughs> you know, they'd be like, oh, thank you. I'd, I'd be like, yeah. Going by my business, yeah. <laughs> I don't spend time telling them. Oh, I made like no. I I want you to go get another one. Like if so, if I see somebody random, like yo, that shirt is dope. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. You know what I be doing with I be seeing people with your shirts on. I be like, that's a dope shirt. You're like oh yeah. I was like, where'd you get that? I was like oh. I was like, my brother made that shirt. You're like what? I was like yeah. My bro- my older brother <laughs> he made getting, that shirt. He getting like, his clout <laughs> out there. <laughs> <laughs> he's like and he was like uh he's like are they, is he gonna make more? I was like you can go get them at Tuttle and Easton. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So you, it, it's just if you see Every something in I your mind your and you create what you see in your mind and put it out there, you win. We don't see it as a victory until you know you done made ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. But if you did it one time, is you should be happy about that. Yeah. You know. Man. Wow, that really just gave me like a whole lot of perspective, man. Like. Because I'm, I've literally been doing with the same thing, like for real, like you know, I'm like, dang, bro. My beats is harder than these cats, bro. Oh, like that, goodness. bro. My, my, I also make these necklaces. Shout out to Two Balance, by the way. Uh, give them a follow on Instagram. Yo, that's Two Balance on I. W O underscore B A L A N C E. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so basically, yeah, like, uh, but, but I mean, that's the thing. I've been getting these necklaces off, man, and it, it, it's they fire. And I'm like, man, like, but I, I need more volume. I need more yeah. volume. I need more. And just yeah. like, now I'm looking back, like, dag, bro, I actually just sold a bunch. Yeah. And I didn't even take time to appreciate those small victories. That's huge, man. Dag on. It came from nothing. Shut it came up. from you figuring it out and putting it out there. And now it is. <laughs> <laughs> now we got free promotion. Yeah, you know what I'm that, that's huge, man. That is, bro. That's huge, wow. man. Wow. Wow. Thank you for that, man. For real, man. Hey, I, I need you to listen to this podcast. <laughs> for me. All right. All right so you, you got another question for my guy? Yeah. I, I got another question for him. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, I mean, this is kind of a given, but I just I still want to know some mm-hmm. of your take on it. So have you considered using social media to help as a marketing tool to grow the business? So... Social media is always going to have its space. Yeah. Its space and its place, right? Mm -hmm. Um, For me, like I said, I'm pushing 40. (laughs) (laughs) And so, like, before Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff, like, I remember when Facebook was just for college students. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I create, I I enrolled into Columbus State just for the email, just so I could get into Facebook when I was (laughs) young. Because you you had to have a a college email Mm. to create a profile. But, like, so these tools have their place in what you're doing. The scary thing about it for me is they could take it away at any moment. Mm. Like, you know, we know what shadow banning, we know all, we done heard all this stuff. Like at any yeah. given moment, these platforms that you build your brand on so heavily, they it could be snatched away just like that. Wow! And so they have their place, but they not the end all be all. Like you gotta know what you're doing when it comes to you know communicating with people outside of that. Back in the day, it, when in the fashion industry, they called them street teams. I'm sure y'all heard of that. All right. So you know what I mean? So riddle me this. <laughs> go ahead. What is your favorite way to promote whatever? businesses you have what's your favorite my favorite way 
would be probably talking to people about it. Word of mouth. Word of I mouth. knew he was going to yeah. say that. <laughs> it There's is. nothing like it. It's, it's far more like organic it. that way. It's nothing like it. Because okay. you can you can transfer your passion. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can see it on they you. They can like, see it on you. Like, so it, it, it's word of mouth is just. It's just the, the way for real. Yeah. Like, it might be one at a time. Yeah. But, like, you, you can really make a lasting impression versus, you know, trying to flex yeah. on the ground. Like, yeah. hey, I got it like this. Yeah. You know, they but you know, uh, Instagram is a knockoff of word of mouth if you really think about it. Yeah, true. <laughs> it can spread faster. That's really the only benefit. You know I, what I, I mean? I feel like honestly, like it's a uh, Instagram in a lot of cases is like a uh, smoke and mirrors, man. It like is. it's a uh, it is. You, you are only allowed to see a side of what's going on. Yeah. You know, like they're able to shine light. Yeah. On certain things, but not the whole picture. Right? Yeah. When they see you in person, like, hey, bro, you don't, I don't remember you looking yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm and Instagram only allows you the highlights. They not even necessarily the highlights. They don't give you time to communicate. Mm-hmm. Like the reels now, you got what a minute? Yeah. Oh like yeah. Minute. You know what I'm saying? So how much are you not saying to fit what you trying to say in the minute? So that's why you got to create more content. You got to create more content. But yeah. then when you start creating that content and it ain't getting the numbers you thinking it's going to get. Discouraged. It hits you right in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so, like, Instagram is cool, but it's nothing going to be like setting up a booth at a local market. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and talking to the people. Like, those things are always going to be valuable, man. Wow. I think in combination. Word of mouth. <laughs> Word mouth definitely, but also um, we can't dis- discredit though because this is mm-hmm. where we're heading though. Oh, ah, yeah, for sure. And so, like the reason w- what I did was how I've been recently promoting is like I went and got a whole certificate just to learn about search engine optimization. Yeah, that well, mm-hmm. search and engine it, optimization is completely different from Instagram. and social mar- and all, yeah. no, it was also it included social engine mar- uh, optimization also, but it also created um, had digital marketing strategies okay. as well too, and so how to best you know. It shows you if you're gonna market in the song, like how you yeah. should start twenty days out, and yeah, I mean it's it's, it's social a bunch media. Of different stuff. Social media is a tool in your tool yes. belt. You know what I'm saying? It's no different from printing t-shirts and stuff. So there are uh, five ways to create a t-shirt. You yep. got you got your traditional screen printing. DTG, screen printing. You got DTG, yep. which is essentially a printer printing on fabric. Yeah. You got uh, sublimation. Yeah. You got uh transfers. He transferred it. Yeah. So you got that that I just named off four ways, right? Mm-hmm. You need all four of them in their appropriate time. Social media, you need social media in its appropriate time. But you can literally like screen printing t shirts are good for bulk. But if you really want a shirt that got twenty colors in it, you don't want to do screen yeah, printing. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so that's social media is a tool in the tool belt. It can't be the only tool in the tool belt. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna show up to build a house with just a hammer. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, a hard time. You're gonna wonder why these walls ain't getting built. You know what I mean? So it, it's a tool, but it's just one of the tools in the tool belt, man. I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, for real. That's, that's gems right, right there. there right? I appreciate that, my guy. For real. <laughs> man, what else you got for my guy, Dave? Uh, I wanted to go more into like. Um, more in the dad's tripping mm-hmm. and like can give us like a more I know you explained it already but I just wanted like a little bit more details what do you plan on doing that like break it down like so I'll tell you more about besides this oh this is resources for dads I'll I tell you about the resources specifically so resources the problem with resources is they often come when it's too late you know what I'm saying so when mm-hmm. you say I'm gonna show you financial freedom like that's a buzzword. Like I hate when people use the word entrepreneur because that's a buzzword. Yeah, break down buzzword. Like what you mean? It's it's cool to say. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like it, a hot pe- take. Yeah, people say it and it ain't no substance behind it. Oh, I see. I see. It's like a marketing ploy. So you got people. You can find somebody to say, "I'm gonna show you how to be financially free." Mm. You can find them a dime a dozen. Yeah. But at the surface of it, 
they ain't really giving you no substance. Yeah, they literally just kind of keeping it gray. Keeping it gray. Yeah. And you paying for somebody to keep it gray. Yeah, when you need black and white. <laughs> okay, bro, how did you do this step right here, bro? Right. You keep missing it. Right. right bro, but but they're it. purposely keeping it gray so that they can keep making money off of you. Oh, you know bro. what I'm oh, saying? Oh, my God. And so, like, my intention. Yeah, my intention with helping the dad learn financial freedom is to really get these people the keys. Nobody is given the keys. Mm. It's the same way if you got a tax guy. Mm -hmm. Tax people, CPAs, they're only interested, not all of them, but 90% of them are only interested in doing your taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You not you don't have your tax person hitting you all year like, "Yo, let me what you what was this and you know what? Let me figure out how you can write all of this stuff in the studio off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nobody's being proactive. They just like, well, bring me your papers at the end of the year and, yeah. you know, I'm going to do your taxes. Ain't nobody really benefiting us by just doing this stuff. And so you got financial freedom is something that I'm really going to teach. I'm not financially free. And so with that alone, I'm going to find somebody who really going to give what needs to be, you know, given. So you got financial freedom. I'm going to have somebody doing uh, resume building. So to me, that's part of financial freedom. Oh, wow. Get your resume right. Have a professional get your resume right. Because think about it. A lot yes. of y'all done did y'all's own thing, entrepreneur thing, right? Mm -hmm. But have you translated that on paper? What kind of job could you get if you really put the things that you've learned how to do on your own? Yo, man, I, I've thought about that, too. And that's crazy, yo, because I was about to get this ridiculous position at Amazon, bro, just because I was an entrepreneur and I had it on paper. But that was, like, five years ago. Like, bro. ever since, like, I, I got up on my own, I ain't looked back. But think but, about it, though. And it's cool to be on your own doing your own thing. Yeah. But if you put that on paper... And you needed to go do it? Like, let me go find something real quick because whatever happened. Yeah. Imagine what type of job you could get if somebody really looked at what you did in your life and really put that into words that a company is going to understand. Wow. wow. That's going to lead to your financial freedom. You know what I'm saying? At least a better financial situation. But we don't know how to write resumes. See, I thought, <laughs> see, I, was, wow. I agree with you because I had, like, my, other, my mentor at the bank, like, mm -hmm. who helped me get my current position. Uh, he was at my at my last bank. He uh, like, he was like, yeah, let me see your resume because I was probably like three. Of, we were like three of the. Mm -hmm. you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So and he was like, yeah, I'm about to get you out of here. And I was like, cool, but I didn't. I I had experience because I had multiple you know experience working with banks, but I just mm -hmm. never. I didn't know, understand how to properly translate it. I just said credit card. Uh, that, that we we and, put down he, what bro, they he give broke us. it down though. He broke down the process. He said in processing of credit application and, and like he yeah. used to, and as soon as i did that the next job i was just like he's like yeah man you i was like there's there's a level to this yeah <laughs> no nah, it, so it's real so if you if you had a proper you know uh sheet that had really what you who you were on that sheet that reflect who you really are you would probably get a better job mm -hmm. and that's going towards your financial freedom you know what i'm saying another part of it is insurance I hate insurance. Yeah. I hate every form of insurance, whether yep. it's home insurance, car insurance, life insurance. I hate dental insurance. Health. I oh, hate man. insurance. You know what I'm saying? And I agree with you. I, 100%. 100%. But we yeah. got to have yeah. it. Yep. We got to have it. And a lot of the time, not having the understanding of how to use insurance sets us back to. Mm. I got one of my guys, the guy, actually the guy who uh, whose diaper party it was. He has his own insurance company. He does all kinds of insurance. Like he sat down with me over two days for six hours just explaining to me like the importance. I was getting my son an insurance policy. Mm. And like these insurance policies that my son has now, like when he's 16, 17, he'll be able to pull cash from that and go buy a car. Mm. If he wait till 22, 25, 26, He'll have enough for a down payment on a home. You talking about the uh, IRA joint? No, yeah, oh, I, just, yeah, it's just the. Uh, I can't. I don't want to say the term because I can't remember the term. Yeah, yeah. But they're, they're built into these insurance policies that allow you to do that over time. I think Walker, like Walker Flock, like was, 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 yeah. talk, was yeah. talking about like uh, throw, those, like a million dollars in a, in a term life, life insurance, insurance policy, policy, then it'll, it'll double down on you and it, just use it, the money it, you made and keep the bro. initial 
payment in there. And like, if so, if you if you kick the bucket, your family got yeah, bread. Yeah, <laughs> <out. laughs> like you straight. I'm like, yo, that's genius. Let me get a million dollars. Right, quick. right. But the th- <laughs> but the thing also too is we don't really know. The earlier you get a a life insurance policy on yourself, the cheaper it is. The cheaper it is, and the more money you're gonna get. Uh-huh. But we don't understand why we need to keep it because. You know, you robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's an old school term. Yeah, we cut yeah, that insurance policy out because we need that thirty dollars to go do something else. Yeah, we're, we're focused on what we can do today, right? Versus you know, right, the road. right. But and so, insurance has a, a role to play in financial freedom. You know what I mean? So all of these things combined within the dash trip and the, the resources that's going to be given to the dad are a real thing. And, and another one, um, like housing. Like I'm one test away from having my real estate license right now. Wow. I done took the class that I didn't pass one. Day, you got to pass the local and the national. I got to finish the national portion. Mm. And so we know section eight is a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Section eight, the people in my family that had section eight, section yeah. eight helping out a lot of people. But how many men, you know, was on section eight? None, none. But I how get- many you think need it? Everyone like Pretty homeless, much is. <laughs> like homelessness, I use like the yeah, everybody yeah, cares. Yeah, everybody cares. The highest uh, <laughs> statistic for homeless people is men, bro. But we don't get the help, and yeah. so whether it comes in the form of a, a Section Eight type of situation or just like some special housing for men that got a couple of kids, like these are the things that Dash Tripping is going to be focused on. So it's not all about having fun. But it's a big element to it. But it's about really doing real stuff that people need mm-hmm. and being real about it. Cause it people just ain't real about the 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 things that they offer, man. They about making money first. Yeah. And hey, Columbus, we gotta protect this man. Yo, bro, at all costs. <laughs> at all costs, <laughs> Columbus, we pre- Ohio, we gotta cost. protect this man at man. all. Okay, for real, man. Cause this is that's a beautiful thing, man. It really is, bro. Like. And I'm, I'm super excited, like, for hey, you. Man, I you appreciate know what I'm saying? It, like, yo, this is great. It's a Seriously. journey, man, one day at a time. Every time we, we link up, man, You every time I think I got some, like, there's something I can't learn from you, that you teach me something else, man. Man, I just be chilling, man. <laughs> I hate that thing. ever since I met him. Man, I just be chilling, man. I be chilling. I be that's chilling awesome. in my own lane, man. That's that's it. You know what I'm saying? I just be chilling, man. Be man what's chilling. up, big bro? I I'm just chilling, just man. Chilling, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so could you break down uh, Dad's tripping for me? So why how'd you come we with that did. name? No, like the name. Like is All like the name. Acronym? So it <laughs> It, it's because it's funny. You oh, know okay. what I mean? Okay. Uh, oh. Dad's tripping. Most people, when they first hear it, they yeah, people say dads is tripping all the time because yeah. we not heard and we be we be hollering. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But so it, it, it serves two purposes. It serves the purpose because it's funny. But then, like, it's exactly what it is. Like, dads taking trips with their kids around, you mm. know? So that is, it's just silly. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. it's yeah, it's silly, like, catchy, and it makes some sense when you think about it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. And so I got we you. not we not tripping like we tripping because we want to be respected, but you know we dads taking trips with our kids at the yeah. same time. Man, I can't like uh, how do you join? Like, is it set up or because I definitely because I never got to take trips with my father. You know, yeah, what I mean? me I, to this either. day I don't know this man. So, but now I got my son, and I said I made a promise to myself that I'm gonna be there yeah. for my son. Yeah, and I'm gonna take trips with my son. You know what yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be rolling out more information on it, like especially since I just got this grant last week. I'm getting all the paperwork official now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really just trying to make sure I have all the paperwork behind it that needs to be there because, like, I ain't really told nobody this, but in my head, I see Dash tripping also as a financial institution. I don't know if that means it's gonna be a bank later. Like I don't know what it means, you know. It could. I want it to be a whole lot. Of, I want it to be a holding company that has property. Mm. Uh, mm. So I don't know what it means yet, but That's, I know that the paperwork to... needs to be behind it for the future. And so it, it's on the slow rollout right now. But I'm probably. I had the first trip scheduled, and we were gonna. I had the charter bus and everything, but they doubled right. the price on it after gas went up and oh, everything. Oh, in the pandemic. And, and so it made oh, it too expensive. You know what I'm saying? So That's I got to I got to recalculate and I'm going to just do something here locally. And so right now, probably within this next week, I'm going to plan something here locally that's going to be a lot cheaper. So, wow. Um I was going to say 
I don't want to say Magic Mountain, but like, I'll, have you thought about some, doing something that's kind of like uh, fun and inspirational, like start like a museum or something? I don't know. I'm just throwing. It, it, it's going to be a little bit of everything, man. It, it, we got we got a lot of places around the city that we can go. Um, too many times as as dads, we don't really put the thought process in it. Let me go have fun. Where can I go have fun? Even though it's just a Google away, mm-hmm. but like it's cool because I got y'all. Yeah. I'm a planet. <laughs> I just come on, you know. Scene what I mean? seventy five, like the, I, the yeah, man, scene seventy five is huge, man. I went to I went to scene seventy five uh, for the first time, and my son had a like oh, had yeah. a ball. Like he yeah. was yeah. like Super we were, fun. yeah. Like he was over here, he was over there. Like he was like he was on trying to catch ticket, man. My man was yeah. getting ticket. Hey, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what we gonna do, man. That's what it's about. Yeah, so. for sure, man. That's a beautiful thing, yo. You know, yeah, man. Like, uh, so what? We got another question for my guy, my guy Flip and Brian. Uh, now on the oh, side, Flip and Murph. Flip and oh, yeah, Murph. Okay. It's all yeah. Good, man. So like, on the financial side, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, I, I know you said you don't want dads tripping, but what are you some financial strategies or tips are that you've been using? Are you invested in cryptocurrency? Do you have any stocks or? Uh, can you break down like um, any of your portfolio? Like, you don't got to go into too much detail. So like. when it comes, <sighs> stocks is a hard thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some. You're not the only one for I, a lot of people. Yeah, I, I I like stocks that just stick out to me in my own gut. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there are those stocks that where we know it's going to be around. You say your yeah. Apple, you know what I mean? Those types of things that are cool. Uh, a lot of us don't have the money to just buy a whole one. Then you got to buy fractions of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I own, you know, a portion of Apple, but I you can't afford a whole portion, you know, mm-hmm. a whole share. Uh, so stocks are hard for me. Probably my favorite one is Carvana. Carvana? Yeah. You know, like they yeah. got the online, the vending machine. The machines. Yeah. Yo, Crazy. they stocks is over $250 right now. I got that joint when they was $19. I know that's right. But it was it was okay. it was no like reason behind me even looking into the company at the time. Yeah. It was just something that I liked. I'm like, yo, they got vending machine for cars? Crazy. Let me get some of these. I did like <laughs> and so a lot of times when it comes to stock, like that I just look for stuff that's cool to me. You know what I'm saying? And and I happen to win on the backside. You right. know what I mean? So I don't have a bunch of stock, man. Like Carvana is just one of them. Um cryptocurrency. I'm still learning about cryptocurrency. I do have some cryptocurrency. Um Me too. I got some XRP. Yeah. Um like what else? XRP. Um getting on my nerves. Bro, I had Dogecoin back in 2018. Woo! Did you get it? I didn't. Oh, I got it out when it was point zero 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 two or something Man. like that. That joint jumped at like, uh, I, at first it jumped at like 10 cents, bro. I was rolling in the dough. Okay? I'm, sh- I'm sure. <laughs> All right, I had so many shares, bro. I just, I was too, too geek. Man. Bro, look, oh. man, I had it back in 2018. Well, me and my boys was just like learning about crypto mm-hmm. and like we was just clowning with it. We was like, yo, we let's get 40, 50 million of these things because that had crazy zeros. Right. Yeah. And so we did that. We was just buying them for like a week. Mm-hmm. We had crazy amounts. And then we was like, all right, let's see what else is real about cryptocurrency. Yeah. Then we sold it, you know, oh, not okay. thinking about it. You know what I mean? <sighs> and then imagine three years later, we was like. Wait a minute, bro. <laughs> Wait, because we didn't look at cryptocurrency since like 2018. We was like, okay, let's figure it out. But then it left our minds. We didn't think about it no more. But then it popped up, and we was like, yo. If you would have kept like, the shares, bro. I wish I would have just forgot about it. You know, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have been up, up yo, bro. Yo, I'm talking. I, we had between between the four of us who was talking about it at that time. We had hundreds of millions of, uh, yeah. of Doge coins, yeah. like between all of us. But it was just funny, and we was like, "All right, it was like thirty dollars, though. Imagine oh, that, thirty dollars worth at like a fraction of a penny, bro. Thirty dollars worth got you like millions of them, bro, for real. But thirty dollars, uh, that ain't gonna do nothing. Let me get my little thirty dollars. We probably bought some food or something, <laughs> yeah. so, you know. So, uh, but anyway, cryptocurrency. I got some now. Um, it's funny because. I got a, what is it, Dog Elon Mars, which is, the the ticker is Elon. And so it's, it's a meme coin, but it, it got some substance behind it, which mm. is funny, because it's based around people trying to go to Mars. 
I'm not trying to go to Mars. But if you think about the way some of these billionaires is moving, they really try to go. <laughs> and it's crazy. So I'm like, all right, let me get some of that. So I got that. And it's this other um, token called Cat Girl Token that's centered around like anime and oh, having yeah, nfts yeah. and stuff yeah. like that yeah. and so they got their yeah. own ecosystem so i'm like people crazy about anime <laughs> so let me yeah. let me get some of those it might, it might bust yeah, it, yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying anime is definitely like raising in trend it like, is it is going crazy so and so i i got some of those some things educated mm-hmm. educated uh guesses there yeah you know and so and saying? so i'm if they do something they do something but i plan on forgetting about these like i should have forgot about the last one and you know who knows um, yeah, any one of these could pop up so i'm like shoot man should i just like water all these plants and just, hey. like plant all these seeds and just forget about them just forget about them see which one grows you never know in a <laughs> year two years. three years oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah one one of the things I'm really interested in though is learning about uh, NFTs. Um, Me too. Yeah, like, like, I feel like I missed a trend on that. No, nah, I was like, man, it's, it's not. Tra- it's started, not too. Man. Yeah, like I'm you better go to you. Open Seas. Like I'm on Open Seas right now, trying to figure out because uh, my next project, once the podcast gets going, music going, my next project is NFTs. But my what I want to do is I want to drop my album covers as NFTs. Yeah, I mean, and give my fans a, a opportunity to own a piece of yeah, the that, artwork. That's really the so play. Also, that's NFTs my piece are basically just like artwork. Like it, so like it, essentially, yes. Yeah, so you got NFTs that's not about to be nothing, which is artwork that don't have no substance behind it, right? And then you got artwork that guarantees you something. Which like, so you got so okay, like he's talking about. Nas just recently did this, right, mm. with his latest album. So. What he did was, I can't remember what, he put out two songs. I can't remember the titles of these songs. But he made a portion of the royalties available. So you buy the NFT, which is a picture of his album cover. But if you spent $10,000 on that NFT, you got 1% of the royalties from that particular song. Oh, snap. And you get that 1% as and, long as you got that NFT. Yeah. In perpetuity. Yeah. I saw I saw Nas do that and I was like, so yeah, that's exactly what. So wait, so yeah. he eats off of y'all, then y'all eat off yeah. of him. Yeah. yeah, it's a symbiotic. It's a symbiotic. Uh, so that's the difference between the NFT that means something and just a regular picture. Like you got artists drawing pictures and they're selling NFTs. That's cool, but like the NFT that has a smart contract on it that guarantees you something. That's what is a game changer. So essentially, you need to be looking into it because of music, Yo, regardless. But yeah, so for me, I got a children's book that me and my son wrote, right? And I don't want to, I don't want to put it out to a publisher. I see your brain working. <laughs> <laughs> you see the gear spinning, yeah, like oh, yeah. work. Yeah. So I got, I got a children's book that we wrote, right? And so now I have to find somebody to illustrate it for me. But what I want to do is I want to turn it into an NFT, the book, whether it be the the front page of the book, the whole book, or, like, pictures right, from inside from the, the book. Yeah. Right. And so what I want to do is put them in NFT form, sell the NFTs, but attach a smart contract to it, which guarantees royalties from the book sales. So it's essentially a, the new way of crowdfunding, if you pull it off. If you pull it, yep. And also now, Holy imagine cannoli. this. Now imagine being an independent artist, having an NFT with a smart contract, and you own your masters and your publishing. <laughs> Wait, say that one more time. <laughs> 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 okay, so basically NFTs, right? And you, uh, with the smart contracts, how you get the royalty with yeah. the one percent, uh-huh. right now. And a lot of the labels are doing this. They're starting to do like having their artists release NFTs for their mm-hmm. projects. But guess what though? The label owns a majority of the NFT. Uh, yeah, so that's they're trying to get all. But now, hold imagine of the if you're an independent artist like me and you. Yeah, we have we're able to pull that off with the NFT and a smart contract without the label. Without the label, but yeah. now you and I, we not only own our masters and our publishing, so we're not only eating off our masters and our publishing right for in perpetuity, but we're also eating off the smart contract from the <laughs> NFT, bro. Oh, wow. Let me ask you this question. Mm. Let's say you make a song that you know is about to pop, right? Yeah, like a, which I do. Uh, okay, so okay. we gonna take that song, right? Yeah. Let's say you broke it down into percentages, okay? So let's say you're willing to give up ten percent ownership of this song, right? 
to like, your parents. It, like in total. In total. Ten okay. percent in total, right? And let's say five people can get the opportunity to own a full percent. And then you take the other five percent that's left and break it down in smaller pieces, right? So I said Nas, the highest amount that he was charging for his NFT, ten thousand dollars. Per for per percent. Per percent. So that times ten is basically a hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So basically. see what what could you do selling that type of like percentage as far as fueling like your own independent work life yo that's you don't need you don't need the the industry giving you no money yo the people gonna do it if they the rock people with gonna you. do if they rock with you they gonna they gonna be like yo let me get let me get yeah. this nft and yeah. they pay you can put whatever dollar amount you want on it you know what i mean so if you you could break it down even as like one thing i learned about business there's no how-to guide on business like there's no way to negotiate a contract because if you think about negotiating a contract it's whatever makes you happy and the other person happy. So there's no right way to do it. And if you understand that, you can literally do what you want to do. So NFTs is basically like you turning your artwork into stock. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, but it's on the blockchain. Like on, a, on, a, on, a, like a, on a blockchain. Well, we're gonna have to. You don't yeah. have to do. They don't yeah, hit it with the blockchain. Wait, we're gonna do that it, later. You you we're right. You turn it. You yeah. turn it. Your independent work into stocks. stocks that people can buy and purchase and it's going to allow you to fuel whatever you're trying to fuel yep wow so that's why and that's why i've been trying to build like the podcast i'm that's why i'm trying to and now get this right you see how we're doing the podcast right and yeah. let's say we like because you make my music or we make new songs and that song blows right yeah. what we can do is because we own our we own the content for our podcast what we can do also we can turn clips like you see how he dropped gems so what I can do is like, I was like, yo, we can, you are not, all three of us, we can just say, hey, Brian, let's do an NFT for this clip of a podcast and then create a smart contract. And then for the people who own this part of the um, podcast, they get this. You can also tie it into your views on YouTube and everything. It's crazy. And it could be as simple as if somebody buy an NFT, they get like exclusive merch from you. Yeah. So it don't right. have to be they get anything, right. you know what, I'm you know what if, I mean? But if you decide to, you know, chip in, right. you know what I'm saying, you get, you get something. This, yeah. You know I'm saying, a little fruit basket or yeah. something. And right. so, That's like I say, it. like, there's no way to run any of this stuff. You can do whatever you want to do. And, like, when you're doing business negotiations with people, you just put something out to get a yes, to get an agreement. You don't have to give us uh, you can you can split up five percent of your royalty and you could break it down to however little increments you want to like it don't matter you can do whatever you want to do man <laughs> it's a game changer it is you got you got to dig into that man and Bro, so so I for do? me what? for me with this book situation it's going if i pull it off the way that i see it in my mind it's going to allow me to go around like publishers i'll be able to get the money from this nft sale to go completely independent and just not have yeah, to worry about nobody else. Journey, right. You know what I'm saying? And end up opening your own publisher. All the royalties right. straight right. to you. Yeah. That's you got you got, you got to look into that, man. Wow. And it, it's, just trying, it's just I'll getting started. It's just getting started. Well, oh, that's the thing. Like, it's never been explained to me in that way before. Like, you know, you can, like, talk to someone and try yeah. to Yeah, you right. But, like, yeah, it won't yeah. land. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm going to tell you, 90% uh, of people not doing it that way. They not doing smart contracts and stuff. Every Like, you can go on online to find people that's going to create oh, we're going to create nfts for you we'll give you ten thousand different pictures that you can sell no substance behind it. Mm. and so right now it's a good time to get involved because those projects with no substance they're going to fall off soon and so while you're learning about it now and really putting a solid contract and a solid project together like you can win even right now Cause when those ninety percent fall off, the ten percent gonna be the ones left. Man, bro, I, we've been saying this about the music industry too. Like pretty soon, all this trash that's going on, bro, that's gonna fall off, bro. And the, yeah. the real, that ten percent of the real, yeah, it's gonna be at the top, top bro. Yep. So yeah. now it's the time to get ahead of it. And you know, cause they just they really leaving room for us, bro. <laughs> they are. Hey, and people, a lot of people don't see it that way. But man, just I'm saying, stay, stay real, stay true to yourself. All right. Yeah. My man. gosh, man, this is an amazing 
amazing episode. <laughs> Yo, you see why I had to get him in here, bro? bro I, like, I see why. Like, I've been trying to, like, you know he's so busy, though. I've been trying to, like, like every, every time, like, it's like, yo, you scheduled? He's like, we schedule it. Psh, oh, I miss. <laughs> he's like, you couldn't schedule now? <laughs> no, I miss. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't hard to find, man. You just got to give, give me a day and be solid about it, man. That's you're, it. You're okay, then. Like, yo. <laughs> man, we would definitely love to have you back, you know what I'm saying, another day, man, uh, sometime in the future. You know, definitely uh, after. We definitely got to hear, like, you know, when you get Dad's tripping going. You know, oh, gotta invite yeah, you man. back. Gonna have to, you know, chime in on that. See how hey, that's for going, sure, man. I think for that's sure. a beautiful thing. What you're doing is amazing, yo. Uh, bro, thank you so much, bro. Hey, man, we out here, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know you know, but on that note, we're gonna wrap up, yo. All right. So this has been sh- another episode of Straight Spitters with your boy David Reckless, Marty Locks, and. Flipping Murph. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. Stay safe. Stay dangerous. Stay Stay reckless. reckless.